Partitions of IVAL models follow a cohort of patients over time through disease progression and death. Partition survival analysis models are typically used for progressive diseases like cancer. Observed data provides information on disease progression, which can be integrated directly into survival functions in a partition survival analysis model. Most patients have a time when an important event occurs, like progression. The aggregated time of these events for the cohort is often shown as a Kaplan-Meier curve. Each time a patient experiences that event, it reduces the percentage of the total cohort that has yet experienced that event. A survival function calculates the percentage of patients that have not experienced the event at any time. Most commonly, a partition survival analysis model will include two survival functions. The progression-free survival function provides the percentage of patients that remain progression-free. The remainder of the cohort is either post-progressive or dead. The overall survival function provides a percentage of patients that remain alive. The remainder of the cohort is dead. This simple example model has a partition survival analysis node with two branches representing survival curves. Progression-free survival curve at the top and overall survival curve at the bottom. Each survival curve has a survival function beneath it. We can generate survival curves which show all the three states progression-free, post-progression, and dead, which is an implicit state. With state membership defined by the survival curves, the model accumulates both cost and utility based on the changing status of the cohort among the states. Let's build the elements of a partition survival analysis models. The model starts with a partition survival analysis node. Then we want to add branches to the partition survival analysis node, which are the survival curves. We have the progression free survival at the top and the overall survival curve at the bottom. Open the partition survival analysis view to enter settings related to this model. First, we can set the survival time unit to annual. All data, including survival functions, cost and utilities, will use this unit. Next, we can set the time horizon units to 30. That will be 30 years. Then we can see where we set the time report unit to monthly and we'll leave the crossovers as um, the option to stop analysis. Next we need to define the survival curves. A survival function describes each survival curve with respect to survival over time. In this model each the function is derived from a parametric distribution. So let's have a look at those distributions. We'll examine the distribution for progression-free survival. This distribution represents time to progression, but we'll use it for a survival function. The parameters for time to progression distribution would have been derived from survival analysis using a tool similar to SAS or Starter. Now we need to generate a survival function from the progression distribution. Let's look on the variable view. We need to convert the distribution into a survival function by using the dist serve function. The dist serve function calculates state membership at any time based on the time to event distribution. We'll define a variable called serve pf and this represents progression free survival over time. With our survival functions created we now define the health state associated with each survival curve. The progression-free survival curve defines the cohort percentage that has not yet progressed. So we'll call that the progression-free state. And we'll enter that in the partition survival analysis view here. The OS curve defines the cohort percentage that remains alive. The area directly below this curve and above the PFS curve represents patients that are post-progression. So we'll call this one the post-progression state. Finally, we add the appropriate survival function beneath each survival curve. For this first one, it's that variable serve PF we created. 
there's a similar variable for the survival function below the overall survival curve. And note that there's an implicit dead state representing patients above the overall survival curve. Associated with each state may be costs and utilities. We can add these in our partition survival view. For the progression-free survival state, you can see where costs are added and accumulated in different ways. Startup costs would be applied to the cohort at time zero. Continuous costs would be accumulated throughout the model. Interval costs are like continuous costs, but they change at a specific time within the model. And then discrete costs are, of, are an instantaneous cost. The cost for progression free here is um, the chemotherapy cost monthly. Exit cost finally will be when the cohort leaves the state. Both costs and effectiveness are entered into a similar way in the model. With the model complete, we can review the other partition survival analysis reports. We'll see the survival curves, which split the cohort among the three held states over time. Progression-free survival, post-progression state, and then the implicit dead state. We can also generate the state report, which shows the proportion of the cohort in each state over the entire time horizon. It shows the cost and effectiveness accumulation within each state. Finally, we can look at generating the time report. The time report shows a breakdown of state membership and cost and utility accumulation broken down into time periods. We wanted our time report to show monthly uh, time periods, so there's a lot of detail in our time report here. When your model's built, you can use the familiar tools within Triage Pro with partition survival analysis models too. This decision tree part SA model uses clones and we can do cost effectiveness analysis and use the usual rankings report. Now we've got a decision node. Other familiar analysis we want, might want to do would be sensitivity analysis. And again, and you can do that with the partition survival analysis model too. So here we generate the tornado diagram. You also have the ability to export the partition survival analysis model to a Markov model. This will estimate your initial transition probability estimates from the partition survival analysis model. You can adapt this model further to meet your needs. You may also like to use the Partition Survival Analysis Assistant to walk through the steps that we've gone through above, which will remind you how to enter the essential information in your model before you move along to the next step.